Hi, I'm Vizo, and I'm going to talk to you about the new PubSub protocol in Libp2P and IPFS. Okay, so before we talk about the new protocol, let's talk about the old protocol and how we all started. So the first implementation of PubSub in IPFS and Libp2P was FloodSub. So that's the simplest possible protocol you can write. It relies on two things, ambient peer discovery and flood routing. So let me explain what this actually means. Ambient peer discovery means that there is no active discovery for peers. Instead, you rely on connection events, on ambient connection events, and let an external process drive your peer discovery. So this makes it very nice and, and simple to compose with arbitrary uh, discovery options. So the second part, which is the important part, is the routing, because PubSub is all about routing messages to all the recipients. It used to be called multicast back in the old days, but now we don't, have, we don't do multicast, we do PubSub. So FloodSub uses flood routing, which means when you receive a message and you want to forward it, you just send it to everybody you are connected to and who is on the topic. So it has some kind of interesting properties. So it's obviously trivial to implement. And it's highly robust because no matter what you do, you know that even though you might use a lot of bandwidth, you know, you're going to receive, deliver your messages. And the most important part is that it actually has minimum latency because it takes the minimum latency paths across your graph. Now the problem is, of course, that this is, it doesn't take just the minimum latency path, it takes all the paths <laughs> in the graph. So this makes it bandwidth inefficient, and most problematic for all is that there is unbounded degree flooding. That means that if you have a lot of connections, you're, you're going to send, you know, like you have a huge amplification factor, which is a problem for highly connected nodes and, you know, like large-scale overlays. Okay, so how are we going to control the flood and build a protocol that actually scales without breaking down the network? So how Gossip Sub works, it basically has a randomized mesh construction. So we start with our underlay, which is basically all the connections that we have, and construct an, ov an overlay mesh, but first selecting a random number of pairs with a couple of parameters, and then self-stabilizing this overlay within some relaxation parameters. So effectively, what we have here is a parameter control amplification factor, because this is the parameters of the protocol, which is in the actual implementation is about six, okay? And we trade latency for bandwidth efficiency. So on, on top of the overlay construction, we actually augment the mess with gossip propagation about flow metadata. So to the peers that were not sending messages, we occasionally send gossip messages that says, hey, here are the messages that I have, and if you want, you can ask me for, uh, for them. And this allows us to jump hops. For example, if you happen to have an overlay that although you have a node you are connected to, it might be in a long distance from you. So this allows you to jump hops and directly send, send in the messages. And also, very importantly, it allows us to repair overlay pathologies. So for example, if we happen to have, you know, it's very unlikely unless you are under attack to go into a state that basically the overlay becomes disconnected, then the, the gossip propagation allows you to repair this and turn it into a possible network. So, and last and most important, perhaps, is that it also allows us to have an extensible protocol. So, Gossip Sub is, you know, like a baseline protocol on which you can build other protocols on top. So, you can do that by adding more controlled messages to the gossip that gets propagated. So, one of the, one of the extensions that we're already working on is epidemic broadcast trees on top of uh, Gossip Sub. So, enough about the talk. I'm just going to give you a demo to illustrate how all this works. So, first I'm going to capture the random seed so that both simulations, so I'm, gonna, I'm using the network simulator here, the road to, to a network simulator, the road to while well developing Gossip Sub, but you know, like the, the same thing is happening, it's the same code as it runs on the Go implementation. So first I'm gonna run a flat sub simulator, I'm gonna, we're gonna see a bunch of output as the simulation is running. First the overlay is connecting, okay, and now the simulation will start, and basically all the messages are propagating, and then the simulator waits a little bit for the network to quiet down before calling it day and stopping the simulation. So once it stops, it's gonna give us a little summary that says that basically we have 100 nodes, and I should say that we have 10 connections for each node, and basically we send a single message, and we generate it 1,786 published events. So basically, our amplification factor is a nice round 17. Okay, so let's run now the same thing with Gossip Sub, and I should say that sending a single message is absolutely the worst case scenario you can have for Gossip Sub, because you're paying the cost of building the overlay and also actually sending gossip when you're only sending a single message. But even though we're sending a, a single message, this is what the simulation will look like. So in subsequent simulations, I'm gonna stop displaying the trace as it's running live, and we'll just give a blank screen instead of having all the junk coming down on, on Emacs. But what happens here is we're gonna see that it, it comes with an amplification factor of about six, but here we're paying the cost of the gossip. Okay, and to make this more concrete, I'm going to animate it. Oh. 
that's what flood sub looks like. So you can see the flood happening, okay? But it's really fast, okay? It's so fast. In fact, we can actually take the message delay. You can say it took like 200 milliseconds to send the message to these 100 nodes. Now, gossip sub is going to look like that. Okay, it's much more modest. It doesn't blow up the network. And you see these orange things popping up. These are the gossip propagation. Now, after we've sent the message, we have a little bit of a tail. This is the gossip that keeps propagating about the messages here. I should say that it doesn't take that long in real life, but you know, the simulator is doing 10 milliseconds in, in 100 milliseconds. So this only takes like three seconds, but it's going to take like 30 seconds. And I'm not going to wait for the full 30 seconds for that. Now, let's make things more interesting. Let's increase our connectivity. Let's say that we have 20 connections for it. Okay, and before I do that, I should actually, we should actually check the delay so that we have something to compare. So instead of 200 milliseconds, milliseconds it took 260 milliseconds, which is not so bad. Okay, now I'm going to run a simulation that basically uses 20 connections per node. This keyboard really sucks. <laughs> That's what I have to say. <laughs> okay, now I'm, I'm running in quiet mode, so it's going to take a few seconds. So uh, the simulator is running in real time. It's not simulated time, so it actually uses real time. So that's why it takes uh, so long to, to run the simulation. And afterwards, I'm going to run, you know, like the same simulation with Gossip Sub. And here is the, the first interesting fact. So once we increased our uh, connections to 20, our amplification factor in Flood Sub jumped to 35. So that's already being bad. And we're going to compare the same thing with Gossip Sub. I'm going to see that the amplification factor remains in round six. And we, have, we still have our gossip. But now, even though we're sending the gossip messages and the overly construction, the overall messages that we're sending in total is actually much lower than, than Flat Sub. And in order to drive, so we can see that's our amplification factor. So we still, it's just six. 6.18, and we had, you know, like a bunch of uh, gossip messages that lingered on. Now, to get a better view of what actually happened in the network with 20 connections, let's look at FloodSub, and you know, FloodSub is suddenly going to rake the network. <laughs> but it's very fast. <laughs> gossip sub on the, uh, on, the other on the other hand, simply remain remains, maintains the, simple, the same modest profile, you know, like, uh, Almost nothing has changed. A little bit of more gossip is getting sent out because we have more connections. It's so beautiful. <laughs> okay, and it's done already. So this is the, the gossip that is lingering on for about three seconds, which becomes 30 seconds on the animation. And now I'm going to do the same thing for something that's not worst case scenario for gossip sub. But instead, let's say that we send 10 messages within the span of two seconds, like 10 messages for five messages per second. Now, flat sub is going to have the same, you know, a horrible profile, but you know, gossip sub is going to amortize the cost of the gossip, and now it becomes suddenly a much more competitive protocol that gets, you know, like a very, very good amplification factor compared to flat sub. So we see here, so we published 10 messages, we delivered 1,000, which means all 100 nodes got it, and we had, you know, like an amplification factor of 35. On the other hand, Gossip Sub, it's going to run a little bit. You guys can read it, right? Yeah. Just about yeah. All right. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm screen capturing, so it should be much more easier to read on the, on the script on the screen capture. OK, and now we see that our amplification factor remains, you know, like at around 6, which is where it's covering. And our amplification factor from, from the Gossip is about 2, which is basically we end up with a total amplification factor of about 8. So if we are sending higher rates, the gossip is going to amortize even better and because it's sending, you know, like once every second approximately and it persists for about three rounds of gossip. So messages are announced for three seconds. Okay, so if we have higher rate of messages, it becomes, you know, like even better. And, you know, to drive the point forward, let's look at flood sub <laughs> and that and let's enjoy, you know, like the flood as it's dragging the network. It's going to be a lot more obvious because now we're having all the messages propagating at the same time. <laughs> the birth of a new star. Yep. 
And the interesting part is that now we're sending ma more messages. If we look at the total delay for transmission of all these messages, the delay advantage of uh, FLADSAP has basically disappeared because, you know, like we count uh, the total delay to send all 20 messages, and I'm going to calculate this real soon. Okay. So that took you know, 1.91 seconds. Gossip sub took 2.04 seconds. So you know, like the delay advantage becomes marginal for flat sub, but the amplification factor advantage for gossip sub is huge. And just to close that, I'm gonna do the simulation of our modest gossip sub, you know, just sending our messages without ever flooding the network. Okay, and that's about it. <laughs> It's also worth pointing out very quickly that that uh, visualization was written in a day in a programming language that Vizzo invented, uh, and he just had to make the graphic language bindings so that he could make the visualization. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's small potatoes. Okay, so in terms of implementation status, it's now it's already available in IPFS. It's merged in, but you have to enable it with. I mean, uh, PubSub is still considered experimental in IPFS. We're soon going to make it non-experimental now that we have method signing. And you can enable Gossip Sub with an option, with a configuration option. It's all documented in the experimental option. So the, one of the big and important parts is that it's completely backwards compatible with Flood Sub. So you can mix and match Flood Sub and Gossip Sub nodes. Gossip Sub, when it sees a Flood Sub node, it's going to behave like Flood Sub to it. Okay, if you're going to read the spec, that's the URL, that's the Go implementation, and that's the simulator that I used down there. Thank you, guys.